My name is Jesse Grant, and along with my teammates Ray Mastrapa and William Tejeda, we're Group 25, and we're doing automotive gearbox design. This is a representation of the pinnacle of gearbox design right now. It's a transmission fully electronic controlled out of a Nissan GTR. The basic purpose of a transmission is to take the output of the engine and transmit it into torque that can spin the wheels to move the vehicle. Um, there are trade-offs, engineering trade-offs that have to be chosen when you're designing a transmission for a vehicle. Um, like the basic fun function of the vehicle, the fundamental purpose, you wouldn't put a transmission from a semi-truck into a race car. Um, and you, Likewise, you wouldn't put an economical transmission into a vehicle that you're using for performance. Uh, but the transmission plays more parts than that. It's also important how it relates to the other drivetrain components, uh, with the engine, the clutches, the drive shaft, and the differentials. Um, we've decided to split the manual transmission into a couple different parts. So we consider shafts, uh, gears and bearings, and the engagement system and the casing. Um, it's important to know that the, there are different focuses of design for the transmissions. Uh, for a transmission that's designed to go in an economical vehicle, you want to look at low friction, optimal gearing for the vehicle, smooth engagement of the gears, and low contact pressure in the gears so you don't have parasitic losses in the drivetrain. Uh, similarly, you have performance gearboxes where what you're concerned about is holding the power. So you're going to use things like straight cut gears and dog engagement. Some electronically controlled transmissions will have rev match assist and may even be sequential gearboxes to allow for faster shifts. Uh, now I'm going to hand it off to William to tell you a little bit about shafts and the role that they play inside the transmission. Uh, hello, my name is William Tejada and uh, I'll be talking about shafts and the basic components of the transmission. Um, right here we can see the, a five-speed manual transmission which is uh, fairly the standard on, on cars today uh, and it's different components. This is how the transmission looks internally. Um, I'm going to start talking about the input shaft. The, uh, the input shaft seen on green here um, it's connected, well, connected to the engine of the car and at the same time uh, transmit, transmits power to the lay shaft which is also known as the counter shaft. Uh, both the lay shaft and the output shaft seen here on yellow have uh, sets of gears that connect to each other to transmit power. Um, there's also a gear selector fork seen here that will select the different gears through uh, the help of the dot clutch. So the dot clutch will interact with the cluster gears to select the, uh, the desired um, gear. Next slide, I'm uh, going to be talking about the uh, dot clutch and the synchronizer. Uh, the dot clutch seen here, it's located on the output shaft uh, next to each gear. What it does is uh, once the uh, uh, gear selector is moved, it selects the, the gear and engages the gear, um, producing power towards the uh, the output shaft. Um, right here, we see the uh, the synchronizer. The function of the synchronizer is to, um, before the dot clutch engages, to synchronize the speed of both uh, both gears, so it avoids the uh, the gears um, teeth to be damaged. Um, right here, we see. Of a complete picture of a transmission. Uh, we can see the input shaft, uh, synchronizer collar, uh, the lay shaft here, the output shaft, and the selector fork. Um, the output shaft is connected to the differential of the. Uh, um, the differential, what it does is is, is is actually connected to the axles of the of the car, and it spins the. Uh, it spins the wheels of the car, um, either forward or rearward, depending on the gear selected. The purpose of the upper shaft is to spin the differential so the differential will move the wheels. I'm going to be handing over my presentation to uh, Ray, who's going to be talking about different types of gears. In a constant mesh design, the reason why we have more than just one gear, five gears in this example in particular, is to accommodate different types of vehicles to different types of uses. Like Jesse said, we can't just apply a semi-truck transmission on a regular car. Therefore, 
Uh, here we have the ideal dyno that we want achieved with the ideal amount of horsepower and the ideal amount of torque. So we picked our gear ratios accordingly. On our first gear, we have the highest numerical value, in this case 3.54. As you can tell, the torque increases at a much faster rate than the other gears with less RPMs. Once you get to about the fourth gear, we have almost a one-to-one -one gear ratio. What that means is that the power being driven from the engine is being transferred directly into the axles. The fifth, the fifth gear is often called the overdrive gear. The purpose of the overdrive gear is to produce higher velocities with less torque. Um, in this case, it's less than one gear ratio. The purpose of a gear ratio is to have less wear and tear in the engine as well as having a higher fuel efficiency. Now with that being said, I'm going to hand it off to Jesse who is going to talk about the transmission case. The transmission case provides many different benefits for the gearbox. Um, it provides the mounting points for the gears, the bearings, uh, the journals, uh, it locates the shafts, it provides uh, a case to hold the oil which lubricates the gear system. Uh, the function of the oil is to carry away particulates and matter that wears off the gears over time. Um, and it also provides protection, physical protection from road debris or hazards. Um, if, if you had gears just sitting out in the open, the first rock you hit would damage your gears. Um, but we think it's important to consider the role of manual transmissions and where they're going. Um, as, as time goes on, you see less and less manual transmissions are being replaced with automatics or dual clutch um, gearboxes and these these gearboxes they still have gears but their main their function is changing uh, more of a utility and less of an enthusiast or an enjoyment uh, the main thing that we see being eliminated is the clutch pedal which provides uh, an incredible amount of control over the function of the vehicle and it's it's being replaced by uh, electromechanical systems that provide better efficiency and faster shifting but at the expense of the enthusiast Um, so, we wanted to briefly overview the, the role of a gearbox. Um, when you're designing a gearbox, you have to look at the purpose of the vehicle. You have to design the transmission system robustly so that it has a long life. Um, using good engineering practices is very important in a gearbox. You don't want it to fail prematurely or to be improperly designed for the situation that you're employing it in. Um, it's also important for companies to, to try and design gearboxes that can be used on multiple platforms, different cars, um, shared between companies and, and shared technology. And we see the path forward for gearbox as becoming more of an uh, electromechanical system, having more sensors integrated, having better control, allowing for better performance and efficiency for vehicles, uh, 